Hey everyone, this is Dan Johnston, the Jack of All Ministries, here to help you make it happen. And today I'm going to show you the upgrades that we did on our coffee cart this year. You're watching this video hopefully you've already seen the first video that we made about our coffee cart where we constructed uh, this car so that we could sell it at our local pumpkin festival here in town back in 2022 so if you haven't seen that video go ahead and click here check that out and then come back uh, unless you just want to go forward or you've already seen that video then obviously this is where you would want to be now when we did the cart this year we wanted to change some things mostly around branding because last year we just built something to kind of get it going, test it out, and see how it was going to go. Uh, we called it Iced Iced Coffee, which was kind of a play on Ice Ice Baby. Um, but most people didn't seem to get the joke. And we also didn't really have like a 90s theme going around with it. Uh, so it kind of didn't work. But so we wanted to change things up and we decided to go with Red Letter Coffee, which was uh, the name of a coffee shop that we started back in California several years ago. So... Uh, to continue playing on with that, we decided to come up with, you know, some branding colors and a logo and stuff like that. Uh, so really, most of the things we did this year revolved around changing the aesthetic of the cart. The other thing that we really wanted to do this year was save money on the upgrades because now, you know, kind of because this isn't the startup year, we kind of wanted to be more focused on profit and stuff like that. Uh, so what we did was, in addition to buying a new espresso machine, which kind of takes away from what I said before. Uh, we also, I wanted to build everything I could for the upgrades out of scrap if possible. So you'll see as I build this, I'm using a lot of materials that might look strange or maybe not even the best choice to build something like this. Uh, but because we were getting close to the end of uh, building our trailer, which if you want to check out videos about that, you can check this out also. Uh, so we had a bunch of scrap left over from that. So you'll see a lot of this, you know, particle board covered with, you know, big vinyl stickers, basically, uh, you know, the cheap vinyl, you know, materials that they make for cabinets and stuff like that. So you'll see it might not look right, but you know, it was what we had and saved us a ton of money in the end. By the end of this thing, I think we spent probably less than $300 on the aesthetic upgrades on the cart this year. So to start upgrading this thing, the first thing I wanted to build was a sign, something that was going to go uh, up and over the cart and be in front of our canopy so that when you walk by, it doesn't look like it's just, you know, a couple carts with a tent on it. We wanted to kind of up our game on the aesthetic there. So we started by building the sign and I wanted it to be something that would be um, that you could disassemble it and reassemble it and you could fit it in a car if you wanted. You didn't have to necessarily take up a whole bunch of room. And so basically assembling these things were very simple. I just built basically a three-sided box. I used glue and brad nails to hold it together. And then for some of the more supported pieces where the legs were going to come together and need to support weight above it, um, I basically just countersunk some screws uh, into there that I would fill later. And so basically, because this needed to be able to be, you know, stacked on top of each other, I had to build a pocket into the bottom and of the top, and then the middle piece would kind of slide into the bottom, and then the top piece could slide over the top. Um, and then that way it would, you know, be three a three-piece stack, if you will, uh, that you could, like I said, easily disassemble and store. So once I got this built, I tested the fit to make sure everything was going to slide in nice and easy, but still be tight enough to hold itself vertical. I didn't want it to be loose to the point where it's wobbling and crooked and stuff like that. I wanted it to be tight, but still, you know, be able to fit easily without having to beat it in with a hammer or something like that. So basically, I built two towers, three pieces to stack, and then there was going to be a sign that connected between the toppers that would, you know, cover the canopy, like I said. Now, at some point, I added some feet, but I don't have any footage of doing that. I don't know when I did it. At some point, you're going to see that all of a sudden there are feet on the bottom of this. And so that's going to be there as well. So once I had the towers, I wanted to kind of, you know, decorate it up just a little bit. So what I did was I had some leftover decking material. I'd actually uh, bought, you know, a couple of deck boards that I could run through the table saw. And I made the strips that you actually see behind me on the wall. But I had some leftovers. And what I did was I cut some of those up and then ran them through the planer, sanded them down so that I would have some trim pieces that I could attach to the outside edges of the front three faces of the tower. Uh, that way just kind of had more of a finished appeal to it. And really we, we were kind of going for a, like a, a Disneyland restaurant on Main Street kind of vintage but clean look is what we were really going for. I also decided that what I was gonna do 
um, is on the sign on the top where there's like a horizontal support in front of the canopy. Originally, I was going to build it out of wood, but I decided it was going to be easier if I could just buy some conduit that would span that gap. And then I could just hang a sign from there and then I could paint up the poles. Uh, so that's what I decided to do. So I went ahead and I drilled some holes in the toppers uh, that we'd be able to put two poles in there. Um, and I used three quarter inch conduit, but that was going to end up biting me later. Um, and you'll see why when we get there. Um, and then I used some conduit connectors, you know, at basically I used them as caps. Uh, so that once they went through the hole, I could just, you know, attach them on there and it would keep them from falling out of the box. Originally, I was going to try to make them have a tight fit, but it was just going to be easier to let them be kind of loose. That way, there'd be a little bit of play in case the wind blew or something like that. So then uh, I went back through all the countersunk holes that I had from all the, you know, the boards and I filled those up and sanded them down. That way, everything would be smooth uh, so that I could go on to the next step and make everything look pretty. So at this point, I moved over to the cart itself, and I started by peeling off some of the old menu stuff that we had on there last year. When we kind of got going, um, I realized that all the other carts had their menu basically plastered on the outside of their you know trailers, and so I wanted to do the same thing on our cart to help us compete. And I our menu has totally changed; it doesn't look good. So I ended up just peeling all those off. So then I went through and I taped everything up. That way I would be able to paint everything, uh, get it all primed and everything like that. Uh, so I got the primer then and I put the primer on there. I, I This must have been the cheapest primer in the world because as I was rolling it on, I'm like, you can see right through this. It's not doing anything, but it ended up being fine. It was just a prime coat anyway. So I went ahead and primed everything. Um, and then I taped everything off so that we could use this, you know, very nice looking seafoam, you know, maybe a little bit bluer than that seafoam color. Uh, and like I said, we did that because we wanted to have kind of a vintage knot in the color that was, you know, Main Street Disneyland-esque. Um, and I think it ended up working out really well. We got a lot of compliments on the color choice, and we really liked the way that that seafoam color played with the red of the red letter coffee. Obviously, you can't be called red letter coffee and not use red. So once I put the first coat on, went ahead and put a second coat on just to make sure that everything was covered. Uh, looked pretty good, and then I went on to the sign so that I could start painting that. Uh, and obviously, I primed that just like I primed the cart. Um, and then I painted the first and the second coats on the legs while leaving some room for the inserts to slide into place without, you know, peeling any paint off or anything like that. So after that, I went ahead and took the tape off the legs. So you could see the line I was telling you about where it slides into the slot. And then I also took it off the sign, that little front portion of the cart there so that I could get ready and paint that its complementary color. But before I painted the front part, I had some work to do on one of the carts. And so what I did was I started taping off where the lights were going to go because I knew I wanted to have kind of, you know, very, you know, circusy, carnivaly type lights in the front uh, to kind of help us compete with all the trailers around us, like I said before. And so I taped off exactly where everything was going to go, marked off the positions, and then I drilled holes so that I could install lights. And of course... I don't know how to count, and that would come back to bite me later. We'll get to that in just a second. But now that I had the holes drilled, I went ahead and got the white paint and painted that front portion so that it would stand out. And I really liked the way that the seafoam color and the white contrasted each other. And just like everything else, I put two coats of white on the front, and then I removed the tape, and I went on to installing the lights. And this is where I found out that I don't know how to count. So you know those old jokes where they say something like, how many blondes or how many whatevers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Well, if you're asking the question, how many you know people in my family does it take to screw in a light bulb? The answer is two. It's one person to hold the backing and the other person to screw the light bulb in. So before I started doing this, I thought, okay, I'm going to drill holes in the front here. I'm going to poke the, you know, the backing through the hole and then put the light bulb on. But as I did a test sample, I realized that then the bulb would jiggle around and it wouldn't be even. So I ended up drilling the hole just the right size to where basically the backing and the, and the bulb come together and sandwich against it. And so it makes it nice and tight, but it's still, you know, it's able to go far enough to actually make contact. And that was the better way to go. But as we were doing this, I don't have any footage of this, but I realized that I had one too many holes in, in the front of this. The reason that happened is I realized that my camera automatically deletes files. Once it gets to the limit of the memory card, it goes to the earliest one and deletes it automatically and doesn't tell you. So I had been losing footage for a long time and I didn't even know. So what you won't see here in this video is you're going to see... You won't see the footage of us figuring out the lights and getting it right. 
uh, which we ended up fixing because I ordered an extra strand, which worked because some of the bulbs didn't work anyway. So I ended up having extra pieces so that I could sub out bulbs and move things around if I ever needed to in the future. So it was fine. All of that footage got lost because of the camera thing. And I guess you're just going to have to trust me that it got done. So now I actually have footage of me kind of getting things ready on the upper sign. And what I did was uh, I started making the inside of the logo by taking a back panel from a particle board shelf and I painted it white. Then I made an outside frame and I painted that black. Then I attached the inside logo piece on the front of the other frame. That way the inside, the logo would pop out all 3D like and all the letters would float out above everything. Now, remember when I said that using three quarter inch conduit was gonna bite me? If you're looking at what I'm building here, you might be able to figure out why that was gonna bite me. Uh, I'm not gonna give it away yet, but you'll see it. So then I moved on to the sign mount, okay? I attached the poles to the top support, uh, you know, that way it would give me the spacing I needed on the back side of the sign. I ran that across the back of the sign and I attached the conduit to the back side of it with wall brackets, that way it would be held up. Then I put the stops on the inside of the topper so that it would hold the poles in place so they couldn't pull out. But like I said, there'd still be a little bit of flex there. Then I added uh, some pads to the feet, uh, which gives a little bit of grip, but also some stability because those flat pieces weren't necessarily going to be going on flat ground. And so I put the feet there and then I also made some little shims that you could, that way you could, you know, level it out and stuff like that, which we ended up not needing to use. So the next thing I did was I added some corner bumpers onto the countertops because last year when my son and I were loading it into the truck, uh, we didn't have a strategy for loading it yet and we were just trying to lift the whole thing and we dropped it and it damaged one of the corners. So I went ahead and installed bumpers on all four corners just in case because you never know when you're going to drop it again and you know moving things back and forth is just going to cause wear and tear so the more protection the better. Then I started making yet another frame for the upper sign. Uh, and I'm wondering if you're starting to see the upcoming problem yet. It was a simple mitered frame made out of MB, uh, MDF. And then I painted it by priming it and then spray painting it black. And while it was drying, I went ahead and I added a hook to the top of the sign for wind. Because I wanted to be able to bungee that to the canopy to keep it from tipping over. Now at this point, you might have been a person that was thinking that the problem was going to be the wind blowing the sign over. And if that's what you thought, you would be wrong. That is not the problem that's coming up. So after this, I went, uh, I went ahead and reinstalled the privacy toppers on both carts. Uh, and you can see that they are now painted to match the bottoms. And I just had to simply realign the same holes that I had in there before to reattach them on the top. And now that the frame was dry, I went ahead and I added some LED light strips uh, to, the, to the back side of the sign. That way the sign itself, the white part, would glow and kind of make the logo stand out. It actually ended up coming out pretty cool. Now those lights can actually, you know, we normally leave it red because it's red letter. Um, but they can be, you know, they're RGBW LED strips, so they can be any color you want. But usually we just leave it solid red. Um, and then I also ran some through into the back which uh, enables the back side of the sign to light up the canopy behind it at night and give that a red glow as well, which I think is kind of cool. So then as I was installing it in the back, I gave it a test, all the lights worked, everything seemed good to go, and I went into the garage to start building a lid holder, which we would actually end up not using. Uh, but as I went into the garage, I turned around and looked, and that's when I noticed the problem that the three-quarter inch conduit would give us. I don't know if you can tell very well on this video, but the sign was sagging a lot. The three quarter inch conduit being spanned about 10 feet or so was just too much to hold it straight. And I thought, should I just leave it like that? And I thought, no, I'm gonna do something different. So I ended up switching to one inch conduit, which was definitely the right move because that stayed very straight uh, and it was very stable and there's no risk of it coming down on anybody's head. And since I hadn't learned my lesson about the camera at this point, either I don't have any footage or I was just too lazy to get footage, uh, of the next part where I built the sign for the front portion of the cart. But basically I used a silhouette cameo, which is, you know, kind of a vinyl cutter. Um, and I cut out all the portions to make a sign that I then put on the front of a piece of plexiglass because I really liked the way that those type of signs looked. But once I got everything, you know, printed up and put onto the sheet of plexiglass, I realized that I put it on there crooked and I needed to move it over. But I wasn't about to go repeal it and go make everything again and put it on. So what I decided to do was just cut down the plexiglass just a little bit to make things evened up. 
but I never cut plexiglass before. I was a little worried about it, but I looked up a method. It was actually very simple. I just took an old board that I, you know, wasn't going to use for anything. And I taped it down with some painter's tape. And then I got another piece of board and just sandwiched it on top. And then I ran all that as a stack through the table saw and it cut right through it without making any chips in the plexiglass or anything and made a really nice cut. So it worked out pretty well. So the next thing I did was I got some painter's tape and put that on the corners of the plexiglass, pre-drilled some holes so I'd be able to mount it onto the front side of the cart, and then I ordered some standoff screws from Amazon because it gives a nice clean finished look and allows the plexiglass to pop off the wall a little bit, uh, and I actually installed that on site, uh, and the sign looked really, really nice uh, during the day when you could see it on the cart uh, while we were standing there at the pumpkin fest. And then uh, we called it good. And I thought at this point that everything looked great. And so here is what the finished product looked like. You know, we got a lot of compliments on the style this year. A lot of people said that they loved it. And of course, the fact that it's called Red Letter gives the idea that we're associated with a church or at least a Christian venture. Um, so it, it gave us an opportunity to share information about our church with other people. Um, and then honestly, I don't think I could really ask for a better looking cart uh, upgrade by spending $300 this year. So I think it came out really nice, got a lot of compliments, and we had a really great time. It was another successful year. Uh, we made about the same amount of money as last year, so that's good that we didn't lo lose anything or taper off. Um, so overall, I would say that everything was a success. And next year, I don't know what we're going to do to the cart, if anything, but if we do upgrade it, I'll be sure to let you know. All right, thanks everyone for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you would like this video and consider subscribing to my channel because this is the type of stuff I love to tackle. And with that, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.